I'm standing here half naked, but I, I wanted to show you my right shoulder, so that's my excuse. Because today we're going to talk about slicing. And particularly, we're going to talk about one tip that is often given to slicers. They go reading a magazine or go down to their pro and they learn that it's going to be a good idea to get this right hand to cross over the left hand in the impact zone to get this good rotation through the impact zone of the forearm. Now that's a great tip. The thing is with slicing, we all know perhaps it's a case that you're going into that ball, into the impact zone with a very open club face. Or perhaps it's one of those things where you're casting the club or getting the shoulder to zip over the top, out over the top of the plane. And then of course, both those actions could include a slashing across the target line, which imparts that left to right spin. Now, it's a great idea to try and counteract that by getting that club face to come in a lot more flush by rotating this hand over the top. Good idea. But, let's look at the mechanics of that for the wrist. So, if I stand side onto you right now, show you my wrist, take this as a longitudinal axis, watch my wrist. Basically, it can go forwards and backwards, it can go side to side, I can add those two together and it can circumduct. But if I nail these two bones together and really get hold of those and try and get some rotation at the wrist, nothing will happen because the wrist rotation comes from the elbow. It's supination and pronation around the elbow here, elbow rotation. So let's think about that in that golf swing. Now if I stand on to you here with my arm bent and show you my right shoulder and I do some quite strong rotation of the forearm right to its end range, the shoulder remains very stable. It's a synergy thing that's going on around here, I haven't got time, but basically it's really easy to hold the shoulder stable. I don't chicken wing out, I don't do anything strange, it stays stable. But now look, if I put that arm down straight and then go for that full rotation, it's already happening, look here, a shoulder. Because we change the relationship and the synergies of the muscles, the shoulder wants to get involved. Every time I try and get that forearm to go over the top, the shoulder is trying to contribute, it's following, it's, it's trying to help out. Now that can be disastrous in the golf swing, because just think about it. Here I am, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a beginner golfer, or someone's just giving me that tip, and it, it, it's, it, inside my head it's saying, get those hands over. So my brain says, yep, yeah, hands, get over the top, my forearm, try and do it for me. And then of course the body says, well, shoulder, you can help as well, you can contribute, hey, and look what happens. We're back to that sort of over the top slashing action. If you look at the pros, they've got a fantastic ability of being able to disassociate forearm rotation from shoulder assistance. So when they go through the hitting zone, their right shoulder is almost being held back. It's not assisting as the forearm goes over the top. So, so let's just think about that. Let's go to an old favorite drill. The old baseball swing is a beautiful way of getting that forearm to learn how to get over the top of the left one. But look, it throws the shoulder with it. The right shoulder gets dragged with it and that's not a very good shape. So let's go back to the baseball swinging drill. But don't think forearm, think shoulder. Think, keep that right shoulder back. Yes, let the forearm go, but keep the right shoulder back a bit. Now that's a much better shape, and it's getting a long way from that horrible slashing over the top shape. Okay, I've got the shirt back on again, I'm decent now, so uh, the review on this one is simple. Yeah, it's a great tip to try and get those forearms to cross over through the hitting zone for the slicer, but we must remember that that can set up a chain reaction that chases all the way up the arm into the shoulder and finally into the thorax, that can actually make the situation worse. You end up still slashing across, the ball just goes a little bit more left and goes right, or you actually do get the forearm over, hit the ball a bit flush, but it goes straight left because you're still crossing the line. So, think forearm, yes, but think shoulder with it as well, and go to some basic drills, and let's hope that those things transfer into your golf swing.